Hey guys, Sean T. Phillips here with our brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday Sham video today. Thank you to go out today, see what things came out, see what things are on sale today. Today though, the big release that comes out is Avengers Endgame. And with that one though, I know there's a number of different exclusives of that one. Like at uh, Target, they have an edition that comes, it's like a Digibook edition, I believe. And then, um, I don't know if Walmart has any exclusives for it. But I know, you know, Best Buy has the Steelbook. They also have like a um, four movie exclusive Steelbook collection of all the Avengers movies together in this like Best Buy exclusive steelbook set. There's also steelbooks today though of Iron Man of the Iron Man films as well as I think the first two Thor films as well. And those ones all release on 4K as well though and you know standard 4K ones but Best Buy has you know a lot of exclusives. So fingers crossed though you know at Best Buy when I get there I'm leaving a little earlier so hopefully they still have some of them left to show you guys. Also though at the end of this video is going to be a whole bunch of brand new DVD and Blu-ray reviews for some things I received to review and talk about for you guys. Some really really cool stuff and as always too Leave me comments below though, letting me know you know what you guys thought of the new titles that I reviewed at the end of this video. If you guys have seen any of them, also if you guys plan on picking any of them up. But anyway though, guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Target we go. And one thing I wanted to mention was about two weeks ago I talked about how I joined the cast of the upcoming science fiction a horror comedy film Crave Roots of Evil which stars you know Felissa Rose from Sleepaway Camp, Courtney Palm from Zombievers, uh, Billy Blair who's in the upcoming Rob Zombie film Three from Hell and he was an Alita Battle Angel. Well they, on there though like I mentioned how the movie is you know uh, has an Indiegogo where they're you know you guys can help contribute to the project and everything. On there though they added a new perk on there which relates to me which if you guys are interested just so, so you know too the movie shoots in Texas but they have a perk on there which you guys can be in a scene with me and a scene with me in the movie and you know if you guys can't go to the actual location where it's shooting my character is a radio DJ so it can be done you know over the phone because it would be like call-ins and that kind of stuff on the show but you know definitely check out the link below if you guys are interested and thanks so much too for the two people already who you know uh, contributed to that perk on there like I said though check out the link below for the Indiegogo page about the movie and in here though they do have a big standee out for Avengers Endgame. Luckily enough they have this out because I was worried since I'm a little earlier today that they might have not actually had it out on the shelf and ready and everything but they do. And like I was mentioning though their exclusive here is a 4K edition which is $34.99 for that one and includes uh, Avengers uh, Initiative which is a look back book in here. As you can see it's like a much thicker edition here and like here's the book inside of here and it has the uh, you know the, the uh, two Blu-ray discs and then the 4K one in here. Now the standard 4K edition here, that one is $29.99 for that one, and then the uh, the standard uh, Blu-ray, that one is $24.99 for that one. But yeah, like I said, here they have a big standee out, and yeah, they have a bunch more of them here of the exclusives, and they, they definitely have a lot, a lot of the 4Ks, and yeah, even more here as well. So yeah, this is like I said, their main edition. Other than that, though, what's new? I'll head over to the actual section, but I think that's pretty much like the main really big thing that we're gonna see out everywhere today, because all this stuff here, they don't have, they don't have any of the exclusives here on this new rack right here. It seems like they're mainly right there, but we're looking the section to see if they put any over there. But other than that, though, all this stuff here was from uh, last week. Let's see anything else different over here. Yeah, because Pikachu was last week. La Llorona was last week. Batman Hush was last week. Yeah, other than that, though, it doesn't seem like anything else new here in the front. But in there, though, in the actual section, though, they did have a bunch more copies of, you know, a Target exclusive of Avengers Endgame. And they also had all the other Marvel 4Ks which released today. Like I was mentioning, the first two uh, Thor films, those ones were in there today, as well as Iron Man, you know, the Iron Man movies released for the first time, you know, on 4K. They had those ones in there as well, and they were all uh, $29.99 for those. They also had a movie called Lying and Stealing, which I don't know anything about. If you guys have seen that one, though, let me know, you know, if that one's worth checking out or, or not. But now I'm going to head over to Walmart and see if they have any exclusives for Avengers. I don't believe they do though, but we'll see. Into Walmart we go. And if you guys remember my video last Tuesday, you know, I went to six different Walmarts trying to find all the new stuff that came out new release-wise in the actual section because like nothing was changed out. And I don't know if this is 100% correct, but the next day though I went into a Walmart and asked one of the people in the, you know, the guys that work there in the movie section, he was saying there was something was like down with a computer and there was like a, a store-wide kind of error where like all the Walmarts or at least most of them didn't end up getting the information to change out the movies or something like that. So that could explain why, but you know, why 
why they were not changed out. But he was saying that uh, by today, though, they should be changed out. So fingers crossed, because I was at one yesterday, and they still didn't change it. So we'll see if they actually change the section. But in here, though, like I was saying, I don't believe there's any exclusive. There are, like, empty spaces and stuff here, but it doesn't look to me like there's any spots where they have any exclusives today. But, you know, the standard uh, DVD of Avengers, that one's 1996, and that's $24.99 for the standard Blu-ray, but they don't have any of those out. I'll have to see if they have a big standee out. Sometimes I miss seeing that, but it doesn't look like I'm not seeing any over there. Other than that, these ones were all from last week. They have, like, a pre-order thing only at Walmart for um, the digital versions. I think it actually includes... The Secret Life of Pets, the first one, and then it's like it has voodoo codes for the second one, something like that, for $29.99 for that one. Other than that, though, they have the Blacklist, the complete sixth season here, and then like Batman Hush, that was last week. This one here, Mr. Mercedes uh, Season 2, that one's uh, $17.96 for that, and The Good Doctor Season 2, that one's uh, $26.96. Uh, this one here called All is True, that released. And that one's a $14.96 for that. And this um, movie here about Steve McQueen, which I, I, I saw the post of this, but I don't know anything about it. If you guys have seen this one, let me know how this one you know is. It's called Finding Steve McQueen. And that one here is um, $12.96. I think it's about, you know, I don't know if that's what it is. It says, inspired by the outrageous true story of the greatest bank heist in history. So I don't, I don't actually think it has anything. To, I don't know. I, like I said, I really don't know much about this. But like, if you guys have seen that, though, let me know how that one was. Also, though, the, um, the from WellGo USA, this one here, Shadow, released. And this is the first uh, 4K, I believe, that WellGo USA has ever released. And that one's $22.96 for that. And then $14.96 for the Blu-ray. And $12.96 for the DVD. Also over here, though, they, um, you know, I already peeked over here in the actual section. It's all the same stuff. So it still didn't get changed out. I did see one location, though, where they had a couple new things out. But there was a lot of spaces. There was like three or four new things. But yeah, I, I'll probably go to um, next to Best Buy just to make sure I you know, get a chance to see the exclusives before they sell out because I'm not sure how many they're going to have. But then I'll go to another Walmart afterwards. So I do things kind of out of order. But they do have all of the uh, Marvel 4K ones in here as well that released today. Like, you know, it was the first Iron Man, Iron Man 2, Iron Man 3, Thor, and Thor Dark World. I don't know what that noise is over there, but also, like I was saying, Shadow on 4K. Now, um, when it comes to Iron Man, you know, this one, though, they haven't had a new edition of this in a long time. I don't know if this has any new features on it, but do any of you guys remember, um, like, when the first Blu-ray came out, came out, when it first released, I remember there was some kind of a recall or something with it. Do any of you guys remember that? Like, I remember, like, the very first pressing or something. I might be totally wrong about that, but I feel like I remember when it came out in, like, 2008 or something like that, there was, like, something with the disc, and they had to, like, send out replacements. Uh, so, but I might be totally wrong, but I remember something like that. Like I said, though, yeah, this did not change, so we'll have to head to another one. But first, we'll go to um, the uh, Best Buy. But it is crazy, though, with that mix-up, though, and, you know, in uh, Walmarts with them not having certain things out because of that. But like I said, we'll go over to uh, Best Buy first, and then, you know, hopefully, you know, because uh, I want to go there first before, you know, risking you know, all the steelbooks and stuff selling out because I really want to see those in person. And then after, like I said, go over to another Walmart. But I'm not going to go to a million ones of them because it seems like it's something that's, I don't know, hopefully they get corrected soon in all of them, but we shall see. And this past weekend, the only one that I saw in theaters was Scary Story to tell in the dark which is you know produced by Gamero del Toro now when it comes to the, to that that series though you know of the books I never actually really read the books I remember like you know having them but I remember really and I don't know if any of you guys are the same way I remember listening to the books on tape version of them as a kid I had like the cassettes you know I think it was probably around like 91 or so like probably around because I was looking around like the time the third you know book released that was when I was really listening to them like something around that period of time like I don't remember 100% sure when the audio versions released but I remember listening to those like crazy and there were those ones that were really themed real well because they had like voice actors like doing those where's my big toe and all that stuff it really really creeped me out as a kid and like so I really you know loved like listening to them as a kid 
So to see this, you know, now come to life in a movie, I thought was really, really cool. And the fact that they based them af you know, after the books, like the actual characters and everything, they didn't like change things around. I mean, they really were meticulous with making them look like the original, you know, animated, you know, uh, you know, drawings of the, uh, you know, like the book covers and the co and the pictures that were in the books and everything. But this movie, though, was essentially though about a group of these kids that ended up going into this old abandoned house. But it had this history of all these things that had happened to her in the past, and this girl who was like put into this room, and they said that she wrote these, you know, these scary stories, and you know, people like died and stuff that were related to the books and everything. The movie had a similar vibe, and people have compared it to like the Goosebumps film, and it had that s a similar vibe a little bit because it was basically though when they go, you know, go into that house, they end up finding the book that she wrote. And of course, they leave with the book, and the book starts writing stories as soon as they leave. And then the people who are in that house have to start having things happen to them, which were you know relating to the original stories. And like like I said, that was essentially what the plot was. It was them trying to figure out how to stop it. But it really did have some creepy elements to it. My oh, my favorite you know story always was the big toe one, and I felt like that was the only one in the movie that I didn't think was as creepy as I was hoping. Like the the one you know some of them though were extremely extremely creepy. I just felt like the big toe one one wasn't as creepy as it could have been for some reason. Like I think I was so used to like the way the voice was, like I said, in that book on tape. But if you guys saw Scary Stories of Tell in the Dark though, let me know, you know, what you guys thought of the movie. Also if you guys remember listening to the audiobook, you know, books versions of them. And also though if you guys get to see anything different this weekend, let me know in the comments below, you know, what you guys saw. Into Best Buy we go. And they have a standee right here, you know, advertising the Avengers. But like I said, we'll see if they still have any more of the exclusives. Well, it definitely seems like they have, you know, some, you know, the exclusives left. Look how big this whole thing is. It's all the Avengers here. You know, the uh, standard Blu-ray one here is $22.99 for that one here. And then their exclusive, like I said, is a 4K one. And that one's uh, $34.99 for that one. But yeah, there's definitely a ton of them here. This many all the way over here. I'm sure they probably have a standee as well. And here's all the 4Ks. Those ones are all $29.99 for those. And they have Iron Man here, you know, the um, the standard 4K one for $29.99. And then their exclusive Steelbook one here. And that one here is uh, $34.99 for the 4K. And then, they, like I said, all these ones are $34.99. Here's Thor Dark World here uh, on 4K. And the, uh, the Thor ones, though, I feel like Thor Ragnarok was my favorite of the Thor movies. And here's the um, Thor, the, you know, the first Thor movie on 4K Steelbook, their exclusive one here. And then, I know I'm kind of going out of order a little bit, but, you know, here's Iron Man 2, the standard 4K one, and here's their uh, Steelbook. These are actually really cool Steelbook ones. All these ones, like I said, are $34.99. But I came to the two, you know, the two of the two sequels to Iron Man. I feel like I like the third one best. I really like Ben Kingsley's character in this one. I thought he was like a really cool, crazy character in this one. But yeah, I think, like, I, you know, I love the first movie, but I think the second one I liked, but I feel like the third one to me was just more fun just because of Ben Kingsley's character. But yeah, they definitely do have a lot of the exclusives. Let me know though in the comments below though if in your stores they had that many as well. Over here though, these are some of the new things that came out. These new slipcover editions here. They're the same original uh, Blu-ray releases here for these ones, but they have new um, slipcovers on these. And they have ones here, uh, This one, they're all, I think they're all um, $10.99. But this one here for American Werewolf in London. Let's see, what was the other new one? This is all like the horror standee here as well. Called of Chucky here for $10.99. Um, get out. These are now. This one's actually only seven ninety nine. It's a cool image on this one. They're all like you know, like uh, face images on them. And then this one, I remember when this first came out, I was like never seeing this anywhere as far as the 13th one. And it was one of those ones I think at one point was only in Walmarts and I never came across it. Like I was literally never seeing it. And it's such a weird thing too because, you know, uh, you know, uh, Jason's not even in the first movie. So it's kind of a weird thing that, you know, he's in the cover like that. And then here's, um, you know, Halloween here, you know, the new Halloween film, the new slip cover on that one. That one's $12.99 for that. A uh, Happy Death Day to You, the Happy Death Day sequel. That one. Oh, that one's more money. That one's $29.99 for that. And then these are like ones that have been out before. You know, the Hills Have Eyes. They always bring these ones out, you know, for the Halloween uh, standees. Let's see, War of the Worlds one down there. That's one of those ones with that same kind of slipcover. Let's see, too, on the other side, is there any more ones? 
Oh yeah, and these are new too as well. This um, Leprechaun 7 film collection here, Steelbook. That one's $28.99 for that one. That's a really good price though for the Steelbook. But this is also one of the things that came out. This brand new exclusive. This actually I think came out this weekend for the, um, you know, the new Halloween film. This is the new exclusive 4K Steelbook for that one. And that one's only $19.99 for the 4K. So that's definitely not a bad price for that one. Also though, they have this uh, Saul 8 film collection steelbook here and that one's $28.99 for that one. Other than that though, um, they have this one too. And this one was like hard to find for a little while. Uh, the Rob Zombie's Halloween steelbook. That one's $14.99 and then there's just some more Halloween ones mixed throughout here. But let's see though over here in the section if there's anything different. But yeah, see over here they have a ton more of the steelbooks as well. But I don't see anything else uh, different over here. Oh, they do have, I think these ones were today. Like I said, uh, New Amsterdam season one, uh, Blacklist, the complete uh, sixth season, uh, Spanish Princess here, and then these are $22.99 for New Amsterdam, uh, $27.99 for Blacklist, $19.99 for the Spanish Princess, and then Homeland, the complete seventh season, that one's on $19.99 for that one. But other than that though, that seems to be all the main new things over here today. Into the second Walmart we go. But if this one doesn't have it out, hopefully by next week they start having everything switched out. Because like I said, I was at one yesterday that had like like two or three things out, like very few things changed. So hopefully, like I said, by next Tuesday, they finally, you know, start getting everything changed out. Well, in here though, it seems like they have a couple of the new things out here, like a Plus One, which released last week here for $9.99 on Blu-ray or $9.96, the same price for DVD or Blu-ray. Body, uh, Body at Brighton Rock. This one, I really like this one a lot. This one I definitely would recommend if you guys haven't seen this one. Check this one out. Other than that, though, uh, this one here for $9.99, this movie here called Doe. This one, I don't know anything about this. If you guys have seen this one, let me know how this one was. It's always really difficult to get these things back in here. Uh, this one here, the uh, Manson Family Murders. All these ones are $9.96. This one was released last week. This one here, um, this Christopher Atkins movie, One Remains. Another one, I don't know anything about this one. This one here though, I should have a copy. This one to review soon, this movie here, Pentagram. This has a cool, like, shiny, reflective cover on this one. But like I said, should have a review of this one up soon. But other than that though, that seems to be all the, like, there are a lot of different spaces here still. But like, hopefully by next week though, all the stuff is put out. And also over here though, they do have an Avengers standee over here. And it's mainly advertising the, um, the standard Blu-ray, which is $22.96 here for that. And then on the side, they have a couple of the 4Ks. And then let's see if there's anything else. Yeah, and, and like one other one, another 4K over here as well. But yeah, like I said, it definitely doesn't seem like there was any exclusives. So sometimes they have ones that have like little like Funko Pop pocket kind of things sometimes. But yeah, it doesn't seem like there's anything exclusive though. And I've done things all out of order since I went to the one Walmart. I went to the, the yogurt place, you know, Menchie's. People always ask if I still go there. Yes. But anyway, though, guys, like I always say, if you guys enjoy these shopping videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Also, leave me comments below, though, and let me know, you know, what you picked up today, which edition, if you guys picked up the Avengers, which edition you picked up. Also, if you guys picked up any of the other exclusive steelbooks of, you know, the first, uh, you know, the uh, Iron Man films or the first two uh, Thor films. Also, too, uh, be sure to check out the Crave, you know, Indiegogo link below as well, too. Let me know as well. Well, what you guys thought of all the DVDs and Blu-rays and 4Ks that I reviewed at the end of this video. If you guys have seen any of them. Also, if you guys plan on picking any of them up. Anyway, though, guys, now stay tuned for the brand new reviews. And the first one I got here is from Arrow Video. And this is a movie here which I had always really wanted to see, had heard about a lot. It's a movie that stars Al Pacino and is directed by William Friedkin. It's a movie here called Cruisin'. You know, William Friedkin directed The Exorcist. Also directed a movie which I really love called To Live and Die in L.A. That's one, if you guys have never seen that movie, highly, highly recommend you guys check that out. That movie kind of has a slight similar feel to this one a little bit with like the, the vibe of it. This one was made a couple years before. This one's from 1980. And this movie though is essentially though about this uh, this killer who's going around to these SNM SNM clubs. And he's going around and like, you know, seducing guys and, you know, and killing them. And it's essentially though about all these killings are going on and the police, you know, um 
chief is basically trying to he has zero leads he has no clue how to track down this killer and uh, Al Pacino's character comes to work at the at the police station and he's going to be like he's brand new to the station he's early to being a cop and he's pretty much just going to be doing like um, sort of street duty when he kind of goes around just make sure there's nothing bad going around and everything and the police chief says you know I, I have something that will bump you up to basically vice squad material and you'll be like really high ranking here but you can't tell anybody about this you can't tell your girlfriend about this no one can know what you're doing here but I want you to go undercover into these SNN clubs and trying to track down and, and, and seduce this killer and hopefully he will find you and start talking to you so you can find this guy and we can finally get rid of and you know arrest this killer and Al Pacino's character is like okay I'll, I'll do this thing and it's a whole big plan where like he's only going to get paid once a month he only and he has a specific time he's told to meet and get the money from the chief and all this kind of stuff. It's basically though about Al Pacino's character going into these clubs trying to see if he can find anybody that kind of knew the you know, you know the victims and like if he can get any information about anyone weird that was hanging around. But it's sort of dealing though with Al Pacino's character kind of getting lost in this in what he's doing and kind of becoming like um sort of it's because of what he's doing it sort of takes over his life life and he becomes sort of obsessed with the whole thing and it's a it's a really really well done movie like all around I thought this was like such a you know it, it, I don't know it's such such a too like a time capsule of the 80s of, of you know the early 80s too like the, the way New York City looked it has the same look that it did in like Taxi Driver because it was like Taxi Driver was a couple years before this but it was when New York was really really different you know because New York kind of gotten you know like Times Square and everything was all fixed up you know I think it was like sometime in the 90s is when it got fixed up. But it's like when you see, though, how different New York was and everything, like I said, it's a total time capsule. On here, though, it has a brand new 4K scan of the original camera negative on here, uh, supervised and approved by uh, William Freakin. On here, it also has a um, a brand new commentary track on here with, with William Freakin as well as an archival commentary track on here. It also has some um, featurettes on here, archival featurettes looking back at the film's origins and productions, as well as featurettes looking at the controversy you know surrounding the film as well also has a theatrical trailer and in here too it also has a booklet which has some pictures from the movie and stuff like that about the cast and about the production and everything but one of these films like I said if you guys have never seen this movie highly recommend you check it out Al Pacino's performance in here was amazing like he was so good in this film also there's a lot of people who pop up in here that was like cool to see like the one guy who was from um, uh, I think it was like was it 10 to midnight I think that was the the horror movie, I believe it was it was called, with uh, with um, Charles Bronson. He was in here. That who was the the guy? And it was like the star of that movie. Um, I think it was a Twelve to Midnight. I can't, I'm forgetting the, the title, but it was also uh, Joe Spinelli. You know who was in Maniac and you know tons and tons of movies. He was in here playing this like real corrupt cop and everything in this movie. And that was and he did this movie. I was reading like right before he filmed Maniac. But one like I said, highly recommend you guys check out that movie. And if you guys have seen it too, let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of it the next one here is from lion's gate and this is the um complete uh you know uh ninth season here of the walking dead it has a thing on here too that says the next season you know returns in october on uh you know amc this is one of those shows, though, where I'll say I've only seen select episodes, you know, here and there throughout the years. I've seen, like, a couple episodes, though, from each of the seasons. So it's a little hard. It's hard to explain, like, the total uh, plot of everything that's going on. But this season's kind of dealing with... um there's a lot of stuff going on there kind of have, like the sanctuary where they're all trying to build is all sort of now starting to come together but there's also though you know in, in, in this in the world of the walking dead here there's all these other kind of camps where people are living and like the survivors are and everything and there's sort of like a lot of disagreements going on with between the groups and it's kind of like you know things are starting to kind of fall apart and it's sort of about all these kind of problems because like if you guys don't know the show it's you know it's set in the world of you know where there was a zombie outbreak and people have you know become zombies and taken over the world and it's all about the survivors coming together and everything and this one throughout 
the seasons, it's all been kind of about them moving around to different locations, different kind of people coming together in the groups, and then, you know, people who are, who've died off and, the, you know, gotten killed and all that kind of stuff. And this is kind of where the show is at now with them. Kind of things are starting to come together. And then at the same time, there's some new things that are happening, too, that are kind of turning everything all upside down and causing all sorts of problems. But I guess one of those shows, though, I've always liked it. Like I said, I have not seen all the episodes, but from what I've seen of it, I've always liked. On here, though, feature-wise, this has um, deleted scenes on here. It has an in-memoriam featurette. Uh, it has a uh, bonus episode on here, episode 908. It has inside episode on here. It has making of. So lots and lots of features on this one. Like I said, one of the guys know that this one was available from uh, Lion's Gate. The next one here is from Lion's Gate. It's a movie that uh, stars Tom Sizemore, uh, Jordan Ladd, who's from, you know, um, the um, Cabin Fever is in this, Kevin Nash. It's a movie here called The Assault. And I wasn't sure, too, going into this, you know, if Tom Sizemore is going to be, like, a small part. But, no, Tom Sizemore has a huge role in this movie. So he's, like, throughout this whole film. This is basically, though, about these two women who are, like, friends. And um, the one's husband is this really terrible guy. He's, like, really, like, mean and abusive and everything. And he has, But he has all this money. And she's kind of stuck with him because, like, it's one of those situations where, like, if she tried to leave or anything, he would, like, attack her and it would be awful. It would be a terrible... Cause he's, like, like I said, he's this terrible, abusive husband, but he has all this money and he kind of th like, you know, gives her these kind of threats like, oh, if you leave me, all this will happen. I'll do this. And, and she knows, too, that he's kind of been involved in some bad things. And what's going on, though, is her and her friend, though, are tr going around and like robbing places that the husband has like money in. So like kind of businesses like this convenience store and the, these other kind of things where he has like money into. They're robbing it because she's sort of trying to get his money and like it's like sort of the big thing she's trying to do is like get his money and like kind of like ruin him but then have this money that you know and she's you know he has no clue who's taking this money he's trying to figure it out but yet you know she's like hiding all the money so she can kind of run away and get away from him and then uh, Tom Sizemore's character is the cop who's kind of looking into this thing investigating these um, you know robberies and trying to figure it all out but he unknowingly though becomes you know starts to like the one friend the you know Jordan Ladd's character's friend who's doing the robbery with her and you know it's kind of like the people that he's looking for are right here and right in front of him so it's kind of like that's all that's going on it's kind of all about the robberies and like the worse and worse stuff that happens but I actually thought this was kind of interesting I thought this was you know Tom Sizemore in here though did a good job in the in the role in here like I said it's not like a like you know sometimes if Tom Sizemore was in a movie it could be like a small scene or two or something like that no he's throughout this whole movie on this one here and like I said this one here is called uh, The Assault the next one here is from Disney and uh, Marvel Studios. This is one, you know, I absolutely love this film. I loved, you know, uh, Infinity War. And this is Avengers Endgame here on uh, Blu-ray. Now, I'm not going to say too much, though, about the plot. Because I don't really want to... Because I, I feel like by now, though, everybody's probably seen Infinity War. And if they've seen the newest Spider-Man movie, you know, and the trailer for that one, you kind of know big things that happen in this one. But still, I'm not going to say too much about what happens in this one but honestly though if you're if you've not seen you know this one yet or if you've not seen infinity war or the new spider-man probably just skip over this review you know and then you know just skip to the end of this one just to be safe but essentially though what um you know this one is about though is you know what happened with thanos in the last film if you guys know the snap you know what he did and a bunch of characters will just say have we're gone and this is now about the avengers the Avengers that are still around coming together after I think it was five years I believe that was I think that was five years I believe it was five years was the time exact time after and kind of coming back together and now trying to figure out if there's a way to get the Affinity Stones and kind of put things back together and bring back everybody and kind of fix what, you know, and, like, fix all the damage that Thanos' character had done. I actually really love this film. I thought this was, like, a great movie. And I'm also really, really interested in seeing, you know, where the films go forward. You know, the next, you know, uh, you know, phase of films. I'm really interested in the ones and the ones they've announced so far. Sound really, really cool. But on here, though, it's a bunch of different features. My favorite one on here, though, was a feature called Remembering Stan Lee, which was like really actually kind of sad too. Just kind of like looking back at it because I've always been a fan of Stan Lee. I think the first time I remember seeing Stan Lee, though, and like really knowing about him, was in uh, Mallrats. That was like, you know, the first 
first movie I ever saw when I like you know started knowing about him and then because before you know I knew he was like a creator of you know Marvel and everything like that and the comics that he created but before that I didn't know too much about him but Mallrats was the first time I had like really really heard a whole lot about him because he acted in that film also though I'm gonna throw out a movie that he acted in that a lot of people probably haven't seen and it was for I think it was like 1990 and I saw this one a couple of years ago called The Ambulance and he's in there actually playing himself and he, it's actually set in Marvel and Eric Roberts character works there but I'm just throwing that out there as like a cool Stan Lee thing but the, basically the remembering Stan Lee feature was going and like you know a lot of behind the scenes footage from like the cameos of him going to set doing the cameos and him kind of talking about you know shooting them and how much he loved doing them and it was they were it was really fun it was one of those like it was kind of an emotional thing too honestly but I really love that feature I thought that was a really cool thing they included on here and a really great me memoriam to him on here though it has a bunch of different featurettes on here as well also has deleted scenes a gag reel on here uh it has also has the, Ru the russell brothers the journey to end game like a making of stuff on here so lots and lots of features on this one as well but you know just a really really fun film if you guys have not seen this one though highly recommend you guys check it out and the next one i got here is from universal it's a movie here called a dog's journey now this is the sequel to uh you know a dog's purpose this one picks up after a dog's purpose ends i will say though i watched this one about like 40 minutes ago right before i started doing this the reviews and I was trying pretty bad this movie this was very very sad so like fair warning you know this is one of those movies it's kind of like a bicentennial man to me where it's one of those things where I'm kind of like teared up and crying throughout the entire movie because like bicentennial man I cannot watch that movie like I have such a tear fest to that movie and this movie was very similar it was a lot of and it's not like you know just some of those cries where you have like little tears this is like pfft, like true tears but it was really good though but really really sad but this is basically though about the character you know if you guys know the film the, the you know the dog that was you know owned by Dennis Quaid's character Bailey and he you know would pass away and go and be reborn in other life or you know other as other dogs but was always finding his way back to Dennis Quaid and helping along the way helping you know bring people together and, and this one though is dealing with Dennis Quaid's uh, granddaughter and like, you know, his daughter and his granddaughter are living with him and Dennis Quaid's new wife. If you saw the first movie, you find out how they came together and everything. But essentially, though, you know, his daughter, though, Dennis Quaid's daughter, is having like, you know, alcohol problems. And she kind of is like, doesn't like... Dennis Quaid, you know, her father saying, you know, the way to raise her kid and all that kind of stuff. So she ends up leaving and goes off and leaves. And, um... And it kind of follows, though, you know, the dog that Dennis Quaid's with in the beginning of this movie that passes away. And he's like, well, I need you to go and, you know, find my granddaughter and, you know, keep her safe. And it's kind of about how the, the dog is reborn again. And then, you know, you kind of almost cry talking about it, but comes again and takes, you know, meets her later on in her life. And, and it's bringing people together. And, and it just kind of goes all through the life. And it is, like I said, it is very sad. I really, really, it really got me big time, this one, honestly. But it has on here though deleted and extended scenes a gag reel which you need to look at something like that after this it has on here though a whole bunch of different featurettes it has on here a comedy track on here with the director really really well done but just keep in mind though very sad uh, the next one here is one that I really liked here. This is James Gunn was the producer of this one. And it's a movie here called uh, Brightburn. And this, you know, stars in here is um, Elizabeth Banks is in this one. And this is basically, though, about Elizabeth Banks and her husband in the movie. And basically, you know, they really want to have a kid and they're having hard times having a kid. But they're like they hear this crash in their backyard and they come across this like spaceship kind of like crash ship. And out there is this baby. So they end up, you know, raising this baby as their own. But, you know, and it, everything seems okay at first. And throughout the years, for the first few years, everything seems all right. But then all of a sudden, this kid gets really strange. And, like, it's almost like something is, like, activated in this kid when this kid gets older. And he starts, like, really acting peculiar. And, like, anybody that kind of, um, you know, messes with him or acts strange to him, he'll, like, get his revenge on them. And, like, he has this stuff, like, he has these growing eyes, glowing eyes and in the barn like um 
the spaceship is out there and this kid is kind of drawn to the barn. And it's essentially though about the parents kind of like realizing, you know, that there's something seriously off about him. But Elizabeth Banks' character doesn't want to accept it though. And that's all you can really say, but it's just an absolutely intense movie. It has like, um, you know, it, it's kind of billed too as like a superhero origin film in a way because of the way it goes. And it definitely has that vibe to it. But honestly, this was really, really well done. Kind of like, there was another movie that came out, uh, you know, recently as well called The Prodigy. And it, this one kind of has a similar vibe to that one. So if you guys like The Prodigy, you know, imagine the, taking The Prodigy movie and then mixing it with like a science fiction kind of vibe to that one. But it has on here though a comedy track on here, as well as creating a supervillain featurette on here, as well as a couple other featurettes on here as well. But really, really like this one a lot here. The next one here is from um, Movie Zing. And you guys get that one at Movie Zing. I'll have a link below. And it's also a Warner Archive title. And this is uh, V, the original miniseries, you know, finally on Blu-ray. Well, this is not the, yeah, the, the original miniseries. And then they made uh, the return, the uh, the actual series, V the series, which lasted, I think, like for like 16 episodes. And then there was like V Returns. Those ones are not on Blu-ray yet. Hopefully those ones come out down the line. You know, the series with like the 16 episodes one or 17 episodes one. And then the, the you know, I think it was a, like a four hour movie or something like that as well. But this one, I remember, you know, having the VHS of this as a kid and watching this so many times. And there were also these, um, I don't want to ruin the back and show anything, but the, um, cause it shows one thing about the one, one, one sort of a spoiler if you've ever never seen this, but as a kid too, I used to love the V dolls. They actually had dolls of the characters from this. And I used to always like, um, I would end up accidentally breaking them as a little kid and then having to get them again. And they were sort of antiques at the time, even though they weren't that, they, they were, I don't know how old they would have been, maybe like 10 years old or something like that. Maybe 92 is when I was buying them or 91, but I was consistently breaking them and always having to get them. They were not cheap. And I was always having to find them at antique stores and stuff. But this is basically, though, about, um, it follows around a group of these people and you see the spaceship that kind of comes above this, all the all these different areas. And um, the spaceship comes down and um, you immediately know there's something peculiar about them. And the people come off the spaceship and like they have this sort of weird sort of echo to their voice. And they're here, kind of, they want people to help them you know do like they're there to try and like collect something and um it's sort of about that and it's also like i said i'm following around the characters and some of the, the the space you know um you know people from space kind of have relationships with humans as well a little bit like um you know who was in here um you know, um, Robert England is in here. I always remember Robert England. Lots of different character actors are in this movie, but it has on here, though, a comedy track on here with the director and as well as a behind-the-scenes documentary. But picture quality, though, this looks great. They did a really, really good job cleaning this one up. And if you guys have never seen this one, this is the very this is the first one, so you can, you can start with this. And like I said, the other ones are not on Blu-ray yet, but I believe they're on DVD. I think they're both out through the Warner Archive, I believe. But definitely check this one out if you guys have not seen it. The next two ones here are from Paramount, and CBS uh, DVD, and I want to let you guys know that these ones were available. And it's uh, you know two new uh, you know seasons of these TV series here. The first one here is Blue Bloods, the complete ninth season. And then there's also also um, uh, NCIS New Orleans, the fifth season here, the complete fifth season. Blue Bloods though, you know, is um, you know following around this family who are you know you know in in the pre precinct, and it's kind of about like kind of goes through all because I've only seen a couple episodes here and there, you know, throughout this one, but you know, it's um. It's basically, though, you know, it stars Tom Selleck, who I've always been a t fan of Tom Selleck. And I recently saw Mr. Baseball, which is an old movie of his, but I really like that movie. But it's basically, though, about this family, and it's kind of all about their kind of family problems and them having some issues together with working together and, like, their their own kind of problems in their lives where they're trying to, like, take down people and that, that sort of thing. On here, though, this has deleted scenes. It has the story of the Reagan season nine. It has a bunch of different featurettes on here. It has CBS uh, Watch magazine special it has cbs watch magazine special with some of the cast on here it has a gag reel on here for ncis this is about uh, some cops a bunch of um you know they're sort of like trying to you know it's all set it's a spin-off though from um ncis because it has um 
the one character kind of that came over, I, I believe, because I haven't, like I said, I have not seen too many episodes. So I know it's, a, it's I know it's a spinoff though. But this is this though is set in New Orleans, and it's kind of about the the um, the criminal kind of stuff that's going on there and trying to you know protect everything. These group of these, and I don't know if you say they're cops exactly, but um kind of like agents I would say and it's like um, this specific team who are like assigned to try and like protect everything there and it's kind of all the kind of stuff that goes on in the city and it's a really really good setting though because there's a lot of cool places they can shoot in this with this show on here though it has um, the King Cake the 100th episode on here cast in Creole a look back at season 5 has a bunch of different featurettes on this one it also has the pilot episode here of Star Trek Discovery which is really cool so it has the pilot of that one on this it also has the pilot episode of um the other um show here um seal team seal team on this one as well but like i said one of the guys know that these ones were available in cis new orleans the complete fifth season and blue bloods the complete uh, uh you know um nice season here and the next one i got here is from warner brothers they sent over a free copy of this one to let you guys know that this one was available and this one here is arrow the complete seventh season here on blu-ray this one also includes a digital copy of the show as well now this is a show though throughout the years i've only seen a couple episodes here and there from the seasons so i haven't seen all of them so I don't know like all the plot points and all the things that have happened in the show but from what I've seen though I really like this show essentially though this is about the character of Green Arrow who is a vigilante you know justice warrior who's basically going and protecting the, protecting the city from the bad people there and all the kind of conflicts and everything that happened and he uh, throughout the show though other people have joined his team but in this season though you know and helping him protect the city but in this season though it starts with his character in prison because of what happened the last season and like it's basically him in prison and the rest of his team though is helping to protect the city and there's also some other conflicts going on but also though someone has come out and is dressing as his you know as the green arrow why he's in prison so it's that kind of is going on as well this is also like i said i really like the show like from what i've seen of this but what's really cool though is i really like how they do these crossover episodes because on here though this has the epic three-part dc superhero crossover event with the flash and supergirl and i think it's really cool though how they connect the shows and have characters from the other shows come into this world and on here though it also has a uh, villains modes of persuasion and in-depth featurette exploring your favorite dc super villains it has two additional featurettes inside the crossover episode on here as well as uh the best of dc's uh you know a comic con panels from 2018 san diego comic con 2018 i always think that's really cool how they include that on here on their releases also has a gag reel and deleted scenes i will say too with the cw superhero shows i'm really looking forward to seeing a uh, super you know no, you know, Batwoman, when that starts, I believe that starts like in a month or so. I'm not 100% sure, but, you know, it stars Ruby Rose. So really, really looking forward to seeing that one. But like I said, one of you guys know that this one was available. Also, I didn't want to forget to mention here, the Arrow set also has a episode guide in here as well, which tells you, you know, a little bit about the episode, as well as like some of the features that are on here, like episode four includes a deleted scene and that kind of stuff. Like I said, just wanted to make sure to mention that. And the next one I got here is from Film Movement. This is a movie that's like, probably, I would say, is probably one of my top favorite movies. I've watched this movie so many times. Probably like in like in my top 50, like one of those movies that I absolutely love. But as many times as I've watched this movie, it's like an experience and you sort of can't even explain it. I don't know why. I've never been able to explain this movie too well. It's a movie here called uh, The Reflecting Skin, which uh, stars Viggo Morganson. It's one of his early films. This movie is from 19, I believe it's from 1990. Now, I remember the first time I, I saw anything of this, to do with this movie was when I was a kid. My dad had a VHS of this movie. And I remember, like, the cover and thinking how cool and creepy the cover was. Then I finally saw it maybe when I was, like, 12. And it's basically, though, to try and explain this is, you know, and do it justice, is it's basically, though, about this kid who, with his friends, he's kind of always wandering around and, you know, messing around and stuff like that. And kind of, like, um, he becomes him and his friends become like obsessed with the one woman who lives in this house out kind of in the middle of this field they they start to think that she's a vampire and this kid's brother has come back from the war and he's played by Viggo Morganson and Viggo Morganson's character starts to see this woman and this kid is like you know, paranoid and worried that it, you know, you know, his brother is going to get killed by her. And there's also this this plot going on too, that gives me a vibe of like sometimes they come back again. That you know Stephen King movie that he wrote. Um, 
because like there's these these guys that are like these kind of grease greaser kind of guys that like are driving around this I think it's a Cadillac this black Cadillac and it has like a similar vibe to sometimes they come back again and like the music in this movie is really really great music you can listen to what like the theme on YouTube it's really great music but it's so hard to explain because there's all these weird things too about this kid and this like uh, I don't even want to say some of the stuff it's just so peculiar and hard to explain but you definitely have to watch this movie. Check out the trailer for this one. This has on here, though, a making of on this one, commentary track on here. Also has a booklet in here, which has an essay about the movie and a bunch of different stills and everything from it. But it is such a great movie. Like I said, it is really, really hard to explain, really, really hard to, you know, to do it justice. But definitely watch it. Picture quality, too. This looks great. Uh, the next one here is from Screen Media. And this is a movie here called uh, Deep Murder, which stars, um, you know, um, or Jerry O'Connor's not one of the stars but he's like one of the, the big name in this one as well as Chris McDonald and this is um this is a really fun concept. Chris Reed, too, who's from SNL, is like a scene stealer in this movie. Like, he was great. You know, um, he on, on SNL, I guess one of the big characters he's known for playing is Kanye West. But, like, all of his skits on SNL are always good. But he was really, really funny in this movie. But um, this is basically, though, it's like kind of like a 1990s, like, adult film. Like a, like a bad adult film. And, like, it starts off like it's like, going to be that. And then within the film, in the world, it's kind of like the movie The Final Girls a little bit. Like within this movie, someone gets killed. And then all of a sudden it stops being a film. And then like, because it's supposed to just be an adult film, like a generic adult film. But in that world, someone's killed. And then the characters are now like surviving, trying to survive and not get killed by someone. And they, they don't really know how to function because they're just like adult film guys. You know what I mean? They're in this adult movie and that's all they know. They don't really know their life or anything like that. They just know what they're doing. And But all of a sudden, everything's gotten all thrown out and, you know, out, out the window. And now there's a killer in this world. And it's a very, very fun concept. It has like a cop there who's inspecting. And, 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 and like everybody, though, actually acts like they're an adult movie though they don't know how to do what they're doing it's just a really fun concept it has on here though an alternate ending feature wise but definitely check this out i thought this is a really fun movie the next one here is from vision films it's a movie called uh, xenophobia i believe that's how you say this say that and it's a movie here uh you know thomas churchill was one of the directors as well as steven escobar and joe castro who directed you know terror tunes which i always thought was a really fun movie this one is called like i said xenophobia and this is basically like a really really fun like science fiction anthology film and some really great effects in here like of the creatures the aliens and stuff in here like really cool you know aliens and this is basically about this guy in the beginning who gets abducted by an alien and it's um he ends up getting sent back to Earth after what they were doing to him. And it's him meeting up with a bunch of different people who had like encounters with aliens for like a, a group. And like he's like talking to them and they're kind of telling their stories about things that happened to them. So it kind of cuts to, you know, it's kind of almost like, you know, with um, Tales from the Crypt, you know, the original Tales from the Crypt movie, like the characters and then the, them telling their story. It's has that kind of vibe a little bit. And it's kind of like you're finding out how the people that are in the group got there through their stories. And like one of them was like a, a couple that was out in the woods and something happened to the husband. The husband's played by Nick Principal. And it's kind of like what happened to them. It's a bunch of different, I think it's like, I think it was three or four stories. I can't. I'm not. Front of, I can't remember for sure how many. But it was actually a really, really fun, you know, horror anthology though. But it's a, you know, instead of being like, you know, uh, horror one is, it's more like horror mixed with science fiction aliens uh, related. The next ones here are both from um, Samuel Goldwyn Mayer, is the company for these ones, and it's a movie here called Play or Die. And this was, this is a fun movie. This is like a escape room kind of film about a group of these. Um, these two friends who ended up um there was like these clues they had to solve in order to like get like to you know figure out what they were doing is like they were trying to like figure out exactly how they did something on the computer and then like they ended up solving this riddle that they were trying to solve and from there it ended up taking them to a um a location and then they ended up inside of a escape room kind of place and it was kind of in them in there and they had to survive and then they were kind of all working in teams the people who were in there so it was two people together in each of the groups and it's about these two people who are together in there who solved the original riddle to, riddle to get to this location and they're in there though and of course though they're 
they're you know trying to survive so it's basically them trying to maneuver through this place and they come across other people who are in the group and they kind of find out what happened to them along the way and it's a crazy uh you know crazy movie here but on here though feature wise though it has some bonus trailers on this one some of their other releases like um head count and pet and cold skin this one here is from samuel goldwyn mayer as well and it's a movie here called head count and this one though it was basically though about um no, it's no, it Samuel Goldwyn films. I don't know why I'm saying Mayer. Samuel Goldwyn films. And um, this one, though, is about these these brothers who hadn't seen each other for a long time. And they're, you know, going to hang out together. And they had, like, this whole big weekend planned. And they went out to, I think it was Joshua Tree area together. But when they were out there, though, they ended up coming across these group of these friends who were all out there. Like, this big group. That's the one thing I will say. that The group was a little too big, a little bit. So when sometimes when you have, like, a movie when there's, like, a really big group, it's kind of hard to like maneuver that many people that's the only thing i'll say you know it's like the groups just seemed like a little bigger than it should have been but it was basically though they came across this group out there because like sometimes when they do that like like some of the characters are just sort of sitting there if you guys know what i'm talking about but basically though they go out there and they're kind of talking about this legend that had happened out there and the one brother is like um oh well you know obviously you want to hang out here and he likes this one girl so he's like you stay here and i'll, I'll see you tomorrow or something and uh, then we'll hang out but it's kind of funny because like he's like seeing i see you tomorrow morning but like the brother like doesn't ever go back he just like the next morning he's just still hanging out with these people but he's basically hanging out with them and they go to the one cabin kind of in the woods area which i feel like they shot something else in that i another movie if anybody knows let me know but i feel it seemed like something else was filmed there and i don't know if i'm totally wrong but this looked like a location i'd seen in some other movie but they were out there and essentially though something is kind of lurking out in the woods and and in the area that they're at and like the desert out in the middle of nowhere and kind of coming after them and it's kind of what's going on and happening to them I actually like this one. Like I said, the group was a little large, if you guys know what I'm talking about. So there's like a lot of characters, and sometimes when it's like that, there's certain characters are just kind of standing there. Now, the next ones here are from uh, Midnight Factory, and these are Italian releases. Now, this set here is totally region free. This one here is called the Escape Room Trilogy, which has three different films. So, this one, though, you guys can watch this one no problem in any standard uh, US Blu ray player. I check these ones just to make sure I played them in my US Blu ray player, not my, you know, all region player. So, you guys can watch this one no problem. This has in here three different films these are all really fun movies the, the first one here i reviewed in detail uh, a couple months back when they released this one this one's just called escape room and this was you know all these ones deal with like people end up in an escape room but the, the one of them is different though because of the concept of it but this is people who end up coming to this uh, escape room kind of event and of course though they're in there and they you know think it's just a game and they're just you know it's a just a, you know they're going to get out and if they don't win they don't win it's not a big deal but of course they come to find out that the rooms are all, you know, death traps. And if they don't figure it out, and it's, they're, they're dying there. So they have to kind of make their way through and people are dying off as they go along. Escape from the Game, though, has a supernatural kind of vibe to this one. And this is kind of like with a serial killer in there with them. And this one has uh, Randy Wayne here as the star of, of this one. And if you guys never saw the movie Valley Drowner, that was a movie that I was in. Uh, I was in that movie with Randy Wayne. So it was cool to see him in this one. But this one is, though, like I said, it has a supernatural kind of vibe. And this one here is Escape Room uh, Marwin. And this one, though, was about, like, um, criminals that were, like, you know, uh, you know, basically given the chance of survival of, um, you know, they were put into like this escape room type situation where they're all getting kind of watched and everything. And it's kind of like, there's only like one that can survive and they have to like survive to the, through the end of the night. And it's kind of them in there, like killing each other and all sorts of crazy, crazy stuff going on. These are actually really cool movies. And you know, in the U S though, none of these ones have uh blurry releases. And I don't even think in the U S these two have DVD releases. I, I don't believe so. So this is a really cool set here. Like I said, totally region free. The next one here is from, um, Midnight Factory as well. They sent this one. Let me know. You know this one was available. Now the cover here. There's nothing bad on this one, but just so no one says anything, I'll cover this over here. But it's Vampires, which is the Vampires remake. The movie, uh, you know, it's the remake of was from. Um, 
70s. This is basically though about these this couple who are out in the middle of this like mansion and it's essentially they're you know seducing people that kind of come along the way to you know drink their blood and it's kind of about like one of them finds this guy though that they kind of like and it's kind of the outcome of that and their their situations but it's a very cool gothic horror film here. It definitely has like a you know since like I said it's based on the 70s movie and it has a real throwback kind of vibe to this one. But like I said one of the guys know that this one's available as well and this one is region free as well. The next ones here are, are um, Australian releases, the next three, and uh, these ones are from uh, Via Vision. And this is this is a fun show here. And this is the complete series. You know, it stars Ken Jeong and from you know from um, you know The Hangover and lots of stuff. Also, he's on you know The Masked Singer, which you know I, I like that show. And I know the second season is coming soon. It's like a goofy, fun show of him like figuring out people. One of the judges on there figuring out who was the person singing in the mask, like what celebrity. But this is uh, Dr. Ken here. And this is fun because, you know, in real life, though, Ken Jeong, before he became an actor, started getting in movies, was a doctor. And it's him in here playing a doctor. It's a basically, though, and like I said, this is two seasons here, and this is region-free as well. You guys can watch this one on a U.S. Blu-ray player or DVD player, no problem. It's just basically, though, a sitcom about him and his family and, like, kind of just all the sort of problems that are going on in the office that he works at and his boss who doesn't like him and his daughter's, like, relationship kind of stuff who she's dating and him, like, paranoid about this and his own kind of problems in his life. And it's just kind of, like I said, a sitcom with all these kind of, you know, things that are going on. It's a really, really fun show. And this is the complete, se you know, complete series here of the show. This one here is one I had always heard about. This show lasted for two seasons. This one is region free as well. This one releases, I believe they said in September. Uh, and I'll have a link for their website as well, though. But this is Timeless Season 1. And this one, um, I actually heard about this one because there's a guy on YouTube that I watch called Mr. Cheesy Pop and he was in one of the episodes of season two and that was the only way I actually really heard much about this show and like you know looked into it and then then I kind of like found out about it through through him talking about it but this show though is actually kind of fun it's a time travel show about this this guy who steals this time travel device this big kind of thing that he goes into with these group of these people and he's basically uh, traveling back in time to try and mess things up, to try and like um, change the way events happened and things like that. It's about, about a group of these people who are like um, doctors and uh, not really doctors, but like some of them are doctors, some of them are like teachers, and they they have like a, a clone of this device, and they're sending that device to try and track down and stop this guy from changing the future, you know, changing the past. And, and of course, they're going there to try and stop him. But as the show goes along, things get royally screwed up for them because if one thing changes in the past, you know how they say, like, everything in the future can get screwed up, like one little detail can change everything, and that's kind of what's happening in here. This is, like I said, a really cool show, and this has on here the deleted scenes and a gag reel on this one. And this one here, now this one, though, is region locked. This one is a, a deep DVD, and there's a Blu-ray of this as well, and they said that one was region B locked. So both of them are region locked. So this one, you guys have to have a all-region player to play this one, and this is a Future Man uh, Season 2 here. And this one is basically, though, about uh, Joss Hutcherson's character, who... Um, it's basically he's like this janitor kind of guy, and like I don't want to say too much about this season though, because without spoiling anything. But he ends up like a, 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 a he's like a real gamer kind of guy, and he end, like did really well in this game. And these people from the future came to like kind of have him like recruit him to go with him and try and like protect the past and stuff like that. And it's like kind of like him going to the future and trying to stop things and stuff like that. But it's like got really really wacky like over the top stuff because uh, Seth Rogen is one of the producers of this so it's really really raunchy kind of like wacky stuff that happens in here but a really really fun show here and I, I know in the u.s though this show is on hulu now the next ones here are all from Eureka Entertainment. They sent these ones over to let you guys know that these ones are available. Now keep in mind though, these ones are all Region B locked. So you guys would have to have an all Region Blu-ray player to play these ones, or be you know in the Region B uh, coding zone. Now the first three here are all from the Master of Cinema series, and the first one is um and this like I said this is from the Master of Cinema series, and this is a tree grows in Brooklyn, and this one has on here though a brand new 2K restoration on here. This has a making of on here, it has a commentary track, appreciation of Dorothy McGuire, a tree grows in 
in Brooklyn, which is a, the um, original radio broadcast version of the film. You know, they did a radio version of it before it was a film. Also has in here a booklet, which has, you know, some facts and some write-ups on the film and all that kind of stuff. Some pictures and all that kind of stuff. You know, poster artwork and stuff in this one. The next one here is from the Master of Cinema collection as well. This is Come Back to the Five and Dime, Jimmy Dean, Jimmy Dean. And this is a film, you know, directed by Robert Altman and it stars Sandy Dennis, Cher, and Karen Black. And this one, though, feature-wise, though, has a new and exclusive feature-length commentary track with film historian Lee Gavin, uh, as well as Cutting Jimmy Dean, which is an interview with film editor on this one. It has a new exclusive interview with the art director on the, of the film, as well as a theatrical trailer. Also has a booklet in here with some facts about the movie and some write-ups and some poster artwork as well in this one. And the last one, which is from the um, Massive Cinema series, is the film here, which stars, you know, um, Jane Fonda, John Voight, and Bruce Stern and It's Coming Home. And this one, though, feature-wise, has a feature-length commentary track on here with uh, John Voight, Bruce Stern, and the cinematographer coming back home with archival featurette, Man of Time, another archival featurette, as well as in this one, it has a booklet as well with some you know pictures from the film and some facts about it and some write-ups and all that kind of stuff as well. Also too from uh, Eureka Entertainment is a film here called uh, Cockle Shell Heroes. Here this one um, is you know in, in filmed you know presented in Cinescope. And I think there's only a couple movies that were actually in that format. And this one has on here, though, feature-wise, has a brand new uh, new and exclusive interview with film historian uh, Sheldon Hall on this one. Like I said, one of the guys know that these ones are all available from Eureka Entertainment. Now, the next one's here from High Octane Pictures. This is a movie here called Three Lives. And this is basically, though, about this woman who ends up getting kidnapped. And she ends up waking up in this bunker. But right before she she wakes up in this bunker, like this old, like, abandoned bunker. But, you know, she wakes up in this cage. But right before... Before you, she actually notices where she is. There's these two guys that wake up in there, and then like you know, the one guy has like this bag over his head, and the other guy like helps the other guy and figures out how to get himself free. And then they hear the the girl in there, and it turns out though that the one guy though you know had done something horrific to this woman 15 years before. So this woman is like terror, like ter so someone that she never wanted to ever see again. She never thought she'd ever see again, and for some reason she's been you know you know kidnapped with these three guys with these two other guys, and she has no idea why she's there and they end up escaping and it's basically them out in the woods and it's about a group of these guys out there who are coming after them and she, you know she kind of needs to rely on this guy who did these horrible things to her you know before and she has to rely on him to try and like survive and it's this whole terrible weird situation that she's been put into and, and these horrible guys are coming after them and they're like military kind of like dress in old kind of like you know war kind of clothes and everything and it's like a terrible situation. It's actually a really interesting movie here. This has on here though location videos, director's bio, special effects featurette, uh, script talk as well as trailers. I will say for trailers though they have a trailer on here for this movie which I cannot wait till it's out. I'm definitely going to review this that one whenever it's out called Killer Sofa. I don't know when it releases but it's like a lazy boy chair. It's like killing the people. Like look up the trailer for it. It's like it looks so crazy and so ridiculous. It's like one of those ones I cannot wait to see. I don't know for sure though when it releases. And the next one here is from High Octane Pictures as well. It's a movie here called American Killing. And this one is basically, though, about this guy who's this writer. And he writes this, like, animated show, which is, you know, had a, a decent amount of popularity. And it's kind of fallen off. And he's not, it's kind of looking as if it might get canceled. And he's kind of going, getting sent out to the, um, kind of in this cabin in the woods area for like a writer's retreat with him and some of the other writers and some of the voice actors in the show, like two or three of the voice actors. And basically though, this guy is kind of had his own share of problems, this, this head writer of the show. And like, he's kind of cracked up and you find out like throughout this too, that he's got some real screws loose and he basically goes and gets these people to this cabin and he sets up all these cameras and he's kind of watching them and kind of of toying with them and it's kind of like he's getting like this real thrill of what he's doing why he's kind of trying to mess around more and more with these people that are in this cabin and it's just like absolutely crazy situation that these people are going through and this one has on here though deleted scenes and trailers on this one as well but like I said definitely check out that trailer if it, I'm not sure if it's online yet or not but for Killer Sofa looks like amazing
And then the last one here is from Wild Eye Releasing. It's a movie here called Doll Factory. This is a total throwback to like um, the demonic toys and um, all the kind of like killer doll, like full moon films. It's got the, a throwback kind of vibe to that on this one. And this is um, basically though about this doll factory where in the beginning of this movie, you know, these people had gotten killed and all these bad things had happened. And it's in this one it's set currently and it's about a group of these friends who are at this party and they're all like... Um, deciding to like something crazy to do for the night so they end up going to this doll factory where things had happened and you know they go there and it's basically though about them you know out there and in, at the doll factory and they were kind of messing around with like some spirit boards and stuff like that and they end up like awakening the dolls in this factory and like they end up getting attacked by the dolls and the dolls are like running havoc around town and it's just kind of about them trying to figure out how they're going to stop them but they were they did a good job with the dolls like i said it has a total puppet master throwback kind of vibe on this one feature wise though it has a commentary track a gag reel behind the scenes featurette and a concept trailer on this one but anyway though guys that's all for the review portion of this video Thanks again for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you guys later.